Makineler her alanda hayatımızı kolaylaştıran insan uzantılarıdır. Makina Fakültesi'nde bu makinelere hayat verecek projeler geliştirerek geleceğe yön veren öğrenciler yetişir. İstanbul Teknik Üniversitesi Makina Fakültesi bünyesinde iki bölüm bulunmaktadır. Bunlar Makine Mühendisliği ve İmalat Mühendisliğidir. Bir makina mühendisi soyut düşünür ve bu düşüncelerle geliştirdiği fikirlerin tasarımını hem günümüz hem de geleceğin teknolojisine entegre edip geniş ufuklara yelken açar. Mekanik problemlere analitik çözümler üretir. İmalat mühendisi ise uygulamaya konulmuş ya da konulacak bu soyut düşüncelere daha iyi tasarım, imalat ve montaj yöntemleri geliştirerek ürün ortaya çıkana kadar tüm evrelerde görev alır. En hızlı, en kaliteli ve en düşük maliyetle somut hale getirir. Öğrencilerimiz Makina Fakültesi'nden otomotiv, uçak, beyaz eşya, elektronik malzeme ve demir çelik gibi makine imalatı yapan birçok sektörde çalışma imkanına sahip olarak mezun olur. Makinalar dört tarafımızda. Hayal gücünün sınırlarını zorlayan, bu hayal gücünü yaşamın her alanında insanlığa sunmaya hazır ve kalbi makinalarla atan tüm mühendis adaylarını bütün Makina Fakültesi'ne bekliyoruz. It's uh, about single stage refrigeration systems. It's that single stage is just one stage of compression. Only one compression. One compression with one stage of compression. It's the application, for example, for domestic refrigerator, for uh, air conditioner. The, this is a uh, one stage refrigeration. The application, for uh, example, uh, for uh, domestic refrigeration. refrigeration for uh, system air conditioner so Th this is a uh, one stage the, the first application for used by human to produce cool was a glass and snow and uh, this pro uh, product uh, an effect of cooling but it is limited in time we, it is limited it, uh, it is just for a moment then uh, we, with human needs to uh, continue to, to a, a continuous cooling effect it, it is uh, produced artificially by refrigeration systems. So there are generally two types of uh, uh, refrigeration system. Refrigeration uh, air ref vapor compression refrigeration system, which, which are the most used, for example, domestic refrigerator is a vapor compression refrigeration system. And there is another uh, refrigeration system. They are the gas refrigeration systems. It's a, a system that use, for example, air as the refrigerant. For the first one, air cycle, the idea is not new. It is, uh, it is from the 19th uh, century. Air cycle refrigerants belong to the general system that use air or another gas that don't change phase. It remains at the gas phase. So these types of uh, refrigeration are called refrigeration systems, uh, air refrigeration systems. The other oh. one use a refrigerant that change phase, that, that pass from vapor to liquid and from liquid to vapor. This is the example, for example, I give the example, always the example of the domestic refrigerator. So when, when we talk about gas, gas phase, it means we talk about sensible heat. Sensible heat, that, that means the fluid, uh, the, the temperature increase without changing phase. It is the sensible heat. I give you an, an example. For example, if I take water in a, in a solid recipient, water is, for example, at at 20 degrees, I hit. What happened? The temperature will increase. Increase until I hit wi without a cavern. I hit like this. Until the temperature. The, I take 100, 100, 100 degrees Celsius. 100 is the, the normal boiling temperature of water, of pure water, at 
the normal, I said that the normal boiling temperature is the temperature corresponding to one, one bar, one uh, atmospheric pressure. Then if we continue to heat, the temperature will, will increase or decrease. I continue to heat. This is the water. I continue to heat. Constant temperature. Why? Because it is phase change. Then a constant temperature until all water is transformed on, uh, in vapor, vapor, vapor phase. Then, then if we get the vapor, then it can, it can for example, vapor, it can increase. This heat that I give to increase the temperature from 20 to 100, it's a sensitive heat. This heat that I give to convert, to transform liquid to vapor is latent heat. Then here is sensible heat. So in refrigeration, in air refrigeration systems, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the, the fluid don't uh, don't change phase. So we, we talk about sensible heat, only about sensible heat. Here, uh, the cycle and diagram of a refrigeration, I refrigeration system. It's composed of four elements, a compressor. So the compressor will drive air from the atmosphere, it compresses it from one to two, from one to two, and then it passes through a cooler, a heat exchanger, a cooler here. So the, to uh, the temperature will decrease from two to three. In a cooler, the pressure, in a cooler, cooler, a heat exchanger, the pressure will increase or decrease? It's constant, constant pressure <laughs> in a uh, cooler. Then it pass in an expander, expander here, to, to the medium, to the cooling medium when we use uh, a heat exchanger, another heat exchanger, or we, uh, or we give uh, the, the air to the uh, cooling medium. So we can use, you can uh, use an open cycle, open cycle, that means the compressor drive air from here and aspirated air from here, comprime it and uh, take it to the heat exchanger, is cooled uh, one time in the heat uh, exchanger, then it is cooled another time in the uh, expander. We get at uh, for a low temperature of the air. This system is used in uh, onboard plane. For air conditioning, they use air system because, because the, uh, he has the advantage of using turbo machineries, compressor and, and uh, uh, uh, expander turbine, which are not heavy compared to vapor compression system. On the cycle here, on the cycle, uh, it's composed of two adiabatic transformation, one, two, and three, four. The compression one, two, and the expansion three, four in the turbine. And two, uh, two uh, isobar, pr constant pressure, two, three, and four, one. Two E, two I, and four I correspond to isotropic evolution. It means when, when the, there is a theoretical, when there is no losses, it is three, four E. Because there are losses, the entropy will increase. So if we calculate the coefficient of performance, the main criteria for refrigeration system, we divide Q0 here, Q0 C, H1 minus H4, which can be CP, T1 minus T4 by 
W of the cycle. W of the cycle is this work, H2 minus H1 minus H3 minus H4. The difference between the compression, compression work and the expansion work. And we get this formula. It means that the coefficient of, of performance depends only on the pressure ratio, the, the high pressure divided by the low pressure. So I said that th this, this type of machine has been used in, uh, uh, and it is, uh, it is used until now on uh, onboard uh, planes because it is, uh, it is not heavy compared to traditional systems. Then it was also used in uh, uh, air conditioning for cars, and especially in a region, uh, in tropical region. Tropical region are characterized by high temperature and high humidity. So we, we, they, they remarked that when we use air with, with, with, uh, with a big uh, humidity and uh, high temperature, the performance of the cycle will increase. They use it, in, I think, in Brazil and in India, where uh, there is a, a, a rate of humidity, it, it, it is greater than 19%, and hot temperatures. Question? So for, uh, for, this, uh, for this, uh, this system, it has many advantages. Uh, the first advantage, it uses air as the refrigerant. Air is free. We can't pay for air, it's free, and is environmentally friendly. That means it has no effect on the environment. The second advantage is uh, the, the performance of the system, uh, the system is reliable and there is no maintenance cost because the reliability of the turbo machineries. Now the, the turbo machineries, we can, uh, we can produce very, very small size of turbo machinery and with a, a big reliability. Yes, yes, very high. Because, because it is small, we can increase the, the velocity. And uh, th this, this is, uh, it was among the, the first system used in refrigeration. It was abandoned because of the low uh, performance. But now we can, we can, we can get performance uh, for turbo machining, for compressor and turbine, we can get a uh, big, uh, uh, big improvements has been done in this way. For example, we take the, the example of turbocharger in, uh, in cars, the same thing turbocharger, the turbine, and the compressor, the same thing like this. We, we add only a cooler. There is, in turbocharger, there is a cooler, a cooler and another, uh, another heat exchanger to, to, uh, to extract heat from the cooling medium. So the, uh, another, another uh, uh, advantage, that vapor compression uh, system deteriorates when we operate uh, far from the design parameter. But here, they deteriorate less than compared to vapor compression system. Another, uh, another uh, advantage, uh, a heat at a useful temperature. We can uh, adjust the temperature for, uh, for, uh, for uh, many application for to get heat or to get uh, to use as a heat pump or to use as a cooler. And uh, for uh, air refrigeration cycles, we'll see, uh, we'll see them uh, tomorrow, they can be used for uh, cryogenic, cryogenic cycles. For, for example, for separation of air, we use an air cycle. We, we don't use a vapor compression system. We'll see uh, that on tomorrow. But, The, uh, it has the advantage, it, uh, it, the low performance compared to vapor compression system. The second one, 
a vapor compression system, a vapor compression system is the most widely uh, uh, encountered in, in many applications. The most elementary are domestic refrigerator, air conditioner, commercial refrigerators, uh, and industrial application. We can need, we can find in uh, all this application, we can find a vapor compression system. A vapor compression system is formed of four elements, four essential elements. A compressor, a vapor compression system, we need a compressor. The compressor uh, compresses the, uh, the refrigerant and will deliver, deliver it to the condenser. Condenser, we must cool the condenser. For example, for the air conditioner, what we, what we put outdoor is the condenser. And we need to, to use a fan to uh, cool the condenser. Then the condenser will, will deliver the, uh, the liquid, refrigerant liquid to a valve or a metering device. It, it may be a valve, a valve or a, a capillary tube, a tube with uh, a small diameter. Then the uh, refrigerant is delivered to the evaporator. When it passes through the evaporator, it evap evaporates. It means it takes heat from the cooling space, so we, we have a cooling effect. Then the cycle, it is in a closed cycle, the refrigerant compression, condensation, expansion in the valve, and then evaporation. We can see uh, the, on the animated uh, cycle here, here the compression, the compressor, com uh, the refrigerant enter here, it's co compressed, then in the condenser, in the condenser, then it pass an expander, an expander or uh, uh, a capillary tube, then it pass in the evaporator where it uh, extracts heat from the cooling medium. You can uh, see also on the cycle, compression, compression uh, condensation, expansion, evaporation. This, the, I do both, I do both in the, but this one, for example, this is the TS, TS diagram. It is with, with subcooling. We can do it in the TS diagram or MPH diagram. Any question? Where? Uh, like the metering device. The metering device. No, I, I haven't prepared. The, we can. Uh, no, I can't. I can't uh, find it here. We can. A uh, metering device is just a valve. A valve. A valve like a valve. It means in the refrigerant we, we need we need that that throttling throttling throttling to decrease the pressure from the condensation pressure to the evaporation pressure. Or using in the domestic refrigerator we use a capillary tube. It's tube yeah, that you uh, in the back of the uh, refrigerator there is a small tube a tube with a small diameter, it's a capillary tube used here as a metering device. So the advantage of uh, this kind of refrigeration system are smaller size for a given capacity, less running cost when you operate a refrigerator, don't pay uh, a lot. It can be employed over large range of temperature. We can, we can use for, uh, for uh, air conditioning. The temperature is greater than 18. We can use for 
for example, to cool uh, drinks. The temperature is about six degrees. We can use to store, for example, meat. We need uh, negative temperatures. And for many applications, industrial applications, sometimes uh, temperature less than, for, for example, to liquefy uh, natural gas, we go to minus 160, 160 degrees. Many, many industrial applications, we can use vapor compression systems. The coefficient of performance is high. It's very high compared to, the, to all other refrigeration system. But the, these are the advantages of this system, the initial cost, it is an investment we need to pay for, for that. And the prevention of leakage of the refrigerant, which is difficult. Difficult because, for example, in, uh, in a car or in, in a house, when there is a leakage of refrigerant, we can smell it. It is, it is generally without odor. In some industrial application, when we use, for example, ammonia, we can smell it. Ammonia is toxic, we can smell it. Um, <laughs> For kilometers, we can smell uh, ammonia. We have one, in, I have seen one in uh, the level that is close to here. They have a spray system just to eliminate ammonia from the air. So in case of ammonia leakage, they immediately spray water. So the ammonia is done so it doesn't... The, uh, they apply it in, uh, there is a... Uh, there is an, uh, a, a factory, factory of ammonia. ammonia. Factory, yes. In, mm. in, in Algeria. In Algeria, there are, are many. There are many because uh, you know that ammonia is, uh, is very expensive. It's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's more important than oil, oil and yeah. gas. So there are many, many factories of ammonia and it is, uh, I think, uh, 400 dollars. $400, uh, for one ton, I think. For one ton, I think. For granular, granular, granular you can uh, uh, gas or granular uh, ammonia, because it used in agriculture, it used in many application for them. So, the theoretical uh, uh, cycle or the Carnot cycle for a vapor compression system, we can do it like on a. We have seen Carnot cycle, but here I do it in a TS diagram with, it is a real gas with this curve. In a pH diagram, it takes this, this form. So it is also, also composed of one isentropic, two isentropic transformation, one, two, and three, four, and two isobars, two, three, and four, one isobars and isotherm. So we calculated the coefficient of performance of uh, Carnot cycle, the same thing that I developed in the uh, first chapter, Q0 per uh, W cycle, and we, we, we have the, this, uh, this result, T0 per Tc difference of temperature. It means here also the Carnot coefficient of performance depends only on the level of temperatures and it, it, it not depends on the, uh, the nature of the fluid. I use any fluid for a Carnot cycle, the coefficient of performance depends only on the level of temperature. But this cycle, we can't, we can't uh, uh, a real system can't operate on a Carnot cycle. Why? First, first, here, for the, the point one, the point one is, is in the, the gas or liquid? It is <laughs> on the gas or on the liquid uh, state? Point one. Mixture. Is the mixture, here is the mixture. It means there is a liquid. And for, for a compressor, it is not good for compressor. For the life of the compressor, it is uh, not good to have a liquid state. So in a real system, this point is deplaced in the, on the curve 
or in the superheated region. It means it is displaced here or here. And the second one, here, there is an expander. Expander, it may be turbine. Turbine, for small, for example, for small uh, refrigeration system like domestic refrigerator, it is not uh, practical. So we replace this device, this expander, by a throttling device, throttling device like a valve or a capillary tube. So this modification, during this is uh, explained how the difficulty to operate the system on Carnot cycle. And the modification are in this, uh, this slide. You can see that point one has been displayed, displaced on, on the curve, on the saturated curve. And the expander here is replaced by, uh, by uh, a valve, a protein valve. And we know that in protein valve, the enthalpy remains constant. So H4 equal H, H5. We can calculate the mass flow rate of refrigerant. How? how many refrigerant, what is the mass of refrigerant that we, we can operate the system with. Uh, uh, M point equal to Q0. Q0 is the refrigeration capacity. And Q0 is the refrigeration effect. effect. How much the heat extracted from the choline medium. And Q0, Q0 is the refrigeration capacity. I explain. For example, when, when you want to, uh, to buy uh, air conditioner from the market, you go, what you, what you, what you ask for? You want to buy an air conditioner from the market. There are many, many variety. What you ask for? Capacity. It means 12,000 12, BTU, 9,000 BTU, 18 BTU. This is the capacity. This is Q0. This is this parameter, Q0. This is normally when we, we, we want to design a refrigeration system, we know, we know three parameters. We know Q0. The refrigeration capacity, we know T evaporation and we know T condensation. Three parameters. It's clear? We know that. The first one, Q0, I begin with T evaporation. T evaporation has a relation, a direct relation with the a product to cool. I give the example, we, we need to, to uh, install or to design an air conditioner for this room. So we calculate, uh, we, uh, we know that the temperature to, to cool this room is greater than, for example, 20 degree. 20 degree is enough, enough to 20 degree. So T evaporation e equal to less than 20 degree. For example, 17 degrees, 15 degrees, T0. So T, T evaporation has a direct relation, relation with the product to cool. We need for climatization, for air conditioning, we need a temperature of uh, T evaporation about 15. We need, for example, to cool drinks. Here in this room, we have drinks, we have bottles of drinks. We need a temperature of evaporation about zero because drinks are conserved at about uh, six degrees. We need to cool to frozen uh, meat, frozen meat, so we need a temperature less uh, smaller, a, a negative temperature, for example, minus uh, 15, minus 20. It's clear? The second uh, parameter, T condens condensation. Uh, uh, the temperature of condensation has a relation with the uh, exterior medium, with the environment. For example, 
a ref uh, an air conditioner that works in the desert in Algeria, where the temperature may exceed 50 degrees, is not the same refrigerant as it works in Sweden. So it has, uh, because in the condenser, condenser, refrigerant will give heat to the environment. So it must be a difference of temperature. So the condenser temperature, for example, in uh, here in Turkey, I, uh, I think it uh, it about 45, 40 degrees, 40 degree, 45 degrees. To, because the temperature here, the temperature in Istanbul, don't increase uh, greater than 40 or 45. The temperature of condensation in Sweden, it will be less, less, for example, 30, because the temperature don't exceed uh, the 30, 30 degrees. Then the third parameter is Q0, the capacity of refrigerant. We need to cool this room for us, for climatization, for air conditioning. So we, we, we calculate all heats. So there are yeah, 20, 20, 20, 60% plus me, and the 62, and the, the technician. So 62 person, you know that a person uh, emitted heat. I emit the heat. Uh, more than you because I, I am in act activity. We can contabilize all heats, all heats. And then there is heat emitted by laptop, heat emitted by the desktop here, heat emitted by uh, all uh, apparatus, or lights, and all this heat, this heat divided by the work of compression. You know that in domestic refrigerator, the compressor don't work to all time. It work generally 14 hours in uh, 24 hours. So when heat divided by time, I get Q0. So I can begin to calculate the cycle. Uh, the first time I, uh, I calculate the mass flow rate of the refrigerant, how? how? Uh, how much refrigerant I can uh, put in my refrigeration system. Question? In another uh, application, uh, another modification of the cycle, the cycle, the first, uh, uh, this cycle was theoretical. And in practical uh, condition, we, we need to, to add here, it was here, 0.4 is on the curve. It is a saturated liquid here, saturated liquid. And 0.1 is saturated vapor. In practical uh, uh, application, we need to move move this point here in superheated to eliminate, eliminate all liquid. Here, it, there, there is a risk to get liquid. But when I, uh, I move point one here, there is no risk to get liquid. It is in the gas phase. The second one here is to, to put, uh, to move point four here in the compressed liquid because commercial uh, throttling valve va require to, uh, to, to require to operate with liquid, with only with liquid. And also to increase, increase the refrigeration effect. effect. The refrigeration effect is H, H1 minus H5. So when we dip, uh, move this point here, we increase the refrigeration effect then we increase the coefficient of performance. This modification are here. This is a subcooling, you know, a subcooling, and this is superheating. Superheating one one prime, prime, and uh, subcooling is four four prime. This is the real a real cycle 
that operates on, uh, for example, domestic refrigerator or the domestic air conditioner operate on this kind of system. There is uh, another uh, type in the vapor compress single uh, single stage vapor compression system. And the, the example is the domestic refrigerator. You know that the refrigerator, there is two parts, the refrigeration part and the frozen part. So we need two evaporator. We, we call this system multiple evaporators system. The system where we need two level of temperature. We need to cool two products. A product with a temperature different from the, uh, the other product, for example, in the uh, refrigerator. So for example, here, I give an example about one stage refrigeration cycle composed of compressor, three evaporator, and a condenser, and three valve, and three back pressure valve, back pressure valve. So the, the compressor will deliver for deliver vapor for, for a compressor will, will deliver vapor to the condenser, it condenses, then will it, uh, the, the condenser deliver refrigerant for the three valves, for the three valves here. It deliver for the valve one, this is the valve one, valve one, valve three, valve two and the other valve. So it will product a refrigerant effect at different temperature. A temperature here, this temperature, this temperature and this temperature. Then the, the vapor leaving this, this evaporator three, for example, evaporator three will undergo an expansion in the in the back pressure valve, back pressure valve to return to the aspiration of the compressor. The same thing for the second evaporator. And here, the, uh, the compressor will aspire all, all the vapor coming from the three evaporator. So this system is a, multi, a multiple, multiple uh, evaporator system when we need to, to produce refrigeration effects at different temperature. And we can here, we can calculate the mass flow rate in, in each, each part of the cycle, M1, M2, M3, and the coefficient of performer. Any question? So in, in, the, in this kind of multiple refrigerator, there are many, many, many configuration. I, choose, I have chosen only this one to present just an example of multiple uh, evaporator. There are many, there are with two compressors uh, with uh, uh, many, many uh, configuration. Question? So we go now. Uh, with the uh, last point in, the, in this chapter uh, on refrigerants, the medium used to carry heat from the evaporator to the condenser, because the refrigerator, what the refrigeration, it carry heat from the me, uh, cooling medium and deliver heat to the condenser to to reject it the, uh, to the surrounding. This is the the principle of operating of refrigeration system. And a refrigerant, a cooling or, or a, a, a heat carrying medium is used in a closed cycle. The refrigerant should have uh, selected properties or a criteria to, to be used in an application. For example, in application for refrigerant, for refrigerant domestic refrigerator, I think in Turkey is 134A. The most used, 134A, the most used in, uh, in, in Turkey, in a refri uh, 
for for air conditioner the R22 R22 Okay. Mm. So, so we, we need to choose a refrigerant for an application. We can't use, for example, R22 for a domestic refrigerant. No, uh, isopen. Is, uh, Bitan, isopen is, is uh, R600A. Bitan is R6. So, so uh, the new the new domestic refrigerator works on R C hundred A, isopitan. For example, you want to uh, to to, bo to buy uh, LG refrigerator uh, mark LG, it it works with uh, isopitan. No, cyclopitan is used for another uh, refrigerator. Uh, I don't remember the mark. But for LG, the new LG R uh, R six hundred A, R six hundred A. It is a hydrocarbon, and it has an excellent thermodynamic properties. The the only problem with uh, isobutan is flammability, uh, but but we we we can improve the heat exchanger and uh, reduce the mass of refrigerant in the system. So we reduce the risk of uh, explosion. All the gas, when it fills the kitchen, it shouldn't go into the flame level level. That is the uh, accessibility <laughs> level. Yeah. If you have a small kitchen, it shouldn't... You have all, all, all the, the risk, risk in the kitchen. Yeah, and it should never go into the accessibility level. This is how they classify where, it. Where, where there are women, general, generally, there is the risk of uh, women <laughs> in the kitchen, so the risk is... Uh, is high. So we need we need some criteria, and among these criteria, we begin with the, the uh, thermodynamic uh, criteria. The first one, low boiling point. Low boiling point. Low. Uh, I said that boiling point is the temperature. Temperature boiling temperature is the temperature corresponding to. Corresponding at which pressure? Pressure. Atmospheric. Atmospheric pressure. So we should operate the operate the system uh, at temperature higher than the boiling temperature to to elevate the risk of infiltration of air in the system. If the pressure is low, then atmospheric pressure, so the air can infiltrate in the system and deteriorate the uh, performance of the system. The second point, high critical temperature. We see here, for example, if we use with low critical temperature here, if a system is like this, so the refrigerant effect will reduce. So the temperature, the critical temperature here will be very high. Our, our, uh, our 600A has temperature very high, uh, I think more than 100, 100 degrees. Uh, the third one, high latent heat of vaporization. We know that uh, a cup equal to Q0 divided by W. <coughs> Q0 is this. So <coughs> when we get high, Q cup will will increase. Q0 increase, COP will increase. You know that the, the heat of uh, vaporization, latent heat of vaporization, the best, <coughs> <coughs> the best one is water. And water, water vapor has been used as a refrigerant, as a refrigerant in the first refrigeration in the 19th century. Uh, as a refrigerant, as the problem with water, the only problem is that produce big quantities of vapors. So we need a big compressor. So in in a, in a, 
in fluids, in uh, conventional fluids, the, uh, the best one is vapor for latent heat, and the second one is ammonia. Then came the other, the other fluid. Another uh, low specific heat of liquid, CP of liquid, be, it will, should be low. Uh, a low volume of vapor, volume of vapor here at point one, because it conditioned the uh, size of the compressor. No corrosive to metal, the, uh, the refrigerant will be in contact with metals, with materials that, uh, that uh, compose the system. It should be no corrosive for metal. Non flammable and no explosive. This is uh, the disadvantage of hydrocarbons and ammonia. They are explosive and they are, uh, for ammonia, is toxic. Non toxic. Ammonia is toxic, but it is present in industrial application where there, uh, there is no human because for uh, the application of human, there is uh, some norms to respect. Low cost, low cost, for example, hydrocarbons are low cost compared to uh, olefin or uh, IHFC. Easy to liquefy at moderate pressure and temperature. Easy to look uh, locating leaks by odor or sweated indicator. Mix well with oil in the, in the compressor. We use oil to lubricate and uh, so it is easy to, uh, to, be, uh, to mix with oil. And then in the condenser to leave oil for the compressor. And uh, the most important now, the most important quality or criteria for a refrigerant are uh, the uh, criteria for uh, or the, uh, its impact on the environment. And for the impact of environment, there are two parameters. There are O, DP, ozone depletion potential, or GWP, global warming potential. So the first one is for the ozone, ozone layer. So you know the, the history of ozone layer. In the, the ozone is a layer on the ground that protect air from the, from the uh, protect the, the ground from the UV radiation, ultraviolet radiation. So in uh, 1974, two American scientists Rowland and Molina have discovered uh, a hole in the ozone layer in the south uh, of, the, uh, of the ground, a ozone layer, and they showed, they de demonstrated that the chlor is the responsible of the distribution of ozone. Ozone is O3. So O3 plus chlor, chlorine, it give, it liberate O2, and it produce Cl. The problem, ClO will react with O3 and liberate Cl. And Cl was always, uh, Cl was used in the, uh, in the refrigerant, refrigerant we call Cf. C, carbon fluor chlorine. In refrigerant that are composed of carbon fluor. Uh, so the international community have reacted uh, through the protocol of Montreal. You know the protocol of Montreal in 1987 to forbidden the utilization of chlorine products. CFC, uh, they were not only used in refrigeration, they were used uh, uh, also in aerosols, aerosols, uh, deodorant, pesticide, uh, aerosols, uh, deodorant, uh, they are replaced uh, now by uh, hydrocarbons. So forbidden the utilization of CFC. And the industry has developed another type of refrigerant 
This type of refrigerant is HFC. They replace the chlorine by hydrogen. From the example of CFC, for example, R12, which, uh, which has been used in domestic refrigerator. The example of HFC is R13A. A. So in 90s, they used R1334 uh, for, uh, for application, for example, domestic refrigerant. Then another problem, the, uh, the problem of global warming potential or the problem, or the problem of the increase of the temperature of Earth. So there are, on the, on the globe, there are layer where there are some uh, greenhouse gases. Among greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide, methane, uh, water vapor, they are naturally existing in, the, in a layer. So if there is no this, this, uh, this uh, gases, this greenhouse gases, they, they make a greenhouse like a greenhouse, like an agricole, agricole greenhouse, you know, for agriculture greenhouse. The, the same thing on the earth. There is some layer where there is a greenhouse that protects the earth. So if there is no greenhouse, the temperature of the earth will decrease. If there is more greenhouse, the temperature of earth will increase. This is the problem. So for example, R, R th uh, 134A, if there is one, one gram, one gram of R134 in the atmosphere, it is one gram, it is equivalent to one kilo, 0.3 gram of CO2. One gram of 134 a equivalent to one kilo point three carbon dioxide. So they decided for, for the, the last first in the Kyoto Kyoto Protocol, then the, in the Kigali Protocol to eliminate R134 A from application and especially in domestic refrigeration. Because its GWP is high high comparant to carbon dioxide. So I resume with the, this development of refrigerant, uh, ref refrigerant in this table. So the protocol of Montreal, protocol of Kyoto, and the protocol of Kigali have done some uh, rules for developed countries and for developing countries. For example, for, uh, for, example, for CFC, CFC, where there is chlorine, in developed country, it decreases. It's no, no utilization of, for example, R12 here. It decreases less in, in developing countries. In some countries, they still using R12. For example, for HCFC, HCFC among HCFC, R22. R22 is decreasing less both in developing and, and in a developing country it increase. In Algeria, all uh, air conditioning system are R22. In Europe, no. In Europe, they replace R22 by uh, other. HFC in, uh, increase less in a developed country, it increase a lot in a developed, uh, developing country. Ammonia, now we use ammonia in developed, developed countries, ammonia for other application than industrial application. They use it with a secondary fluid because I said that, uh, that ammonia need uh, some norms. So they put it in the, all the circuit outdoor the building and they put another fluid. So ammonia will cool another fluid that cool the cooling space. Ammonia in, in uh, 
developing country, it is still in industrial refrigeration. In Algeria, I know that it is only in, uh, in uh, industrial refrigeration. There is no another application for ammonia. Uh, hydrocarbons, it is increasing in developed countries. I, uh, I said that LG has uh, banned all utilization of HFC and they use hydrocarbons. In, develop, in developing countries, they don't uh, find any application for hy hydrocarbons uh, uh, j just for industry. There is another application for carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide, but carbon dioxide has a temperature of condensation, uh, a critical temperature about 32. So we can't use it like this. So we use, we use, use it in uh, what we, we call transcritical, transcritical cycle, like this. It means a cycle that develops, that develops in both the uh, critical, both, both sides of the critical point, in, uh, a part here, in part here. This is carbon dioxide. They use it for uh, uh, air conditioning for cars and for commercial refrigeration. And especially, especially in Norway, in uh, Sweden, in the, I don't know Germany, I don't know. But in Norway, the, the, uh, they are leader in the utilization of carbon dioxide as represented in a transcritical uh, cycle. You know that the designation of refrigerated, we refrigerant, we uh, with R12, R1, R3, 4, they are rule to define. So wh what whatever the, the refrigerant is composed of carbon, hydrogen, chlor, or fluor. Any, any refrigerant they, uh, they is composed of it. They may be there were uh, no uh, chlor, chlorine, no fluor, or uh, no hydrogen. It, it depends on the type of refrigerant. In this refrigerant, there are M uh, carbon, N hydrogen, P chlorine, and F fluorine. So uh, the rule is that N plus Q plus P is equal to M plus two. It is a rule to respect. Then, the designation of the refrigerant, R, R is refrigerant, and the, the first number is M minus one, the th second one, N plus one, and the third one is Q. For refrigerants that are inorganic, for example, ammonia, we deliver the, the, uh, the uh, seven plus, or 700 plus, the molecular weight. For example, for ammonia, molecular weight is 17, so we said R717. For, for example, for carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide, the uh, molar weight, the molar weight is 44, so 7, <coughs> 744. For air, for air, the uh, the molecular weight is 20, uh, 29, so see R, uh, it is R729. I think it's, uh, it's all for this chapter. So any question, discussion? <coughs>